What's up guys, Tommy Bennett here, and today we're gonna discuss the top five most common mistakes slash struggles when it comes to hitting jumps. Now you may be asking, who is this video for? Well, if you're a beginner, intermediate, and even somewhat of an advanced rider, there's gonna be some tips and tricks for you guys in here, as well as we're gonna be discussing it on small jumps, medium, and kind of some large jumps. So make sure you stay tuned. At any point you're digging the content, definitely give it a thumbs up, share the video with somebody who may be struggling with this specific topic of jumping, and definitely consider picking up a sticker. It helps support the channel, helps pay for batteries, GoPros, lift tickets, gas, and all that. And big shout out to my boy, Sean. He's been helping so much this year, really crushing it. Appreciate you, dog. On that note, guys, you guys are amazing, and uh, let's get started. The first thing I wanna address is simply your body position, now specifically your lead shoulder. Now, traditionally, we as human beings see everything facing forward, so when we're snowboarding, we try to simulate the same thing, and that's probably the least awesome thing that you can do, especially for jumps. Now, what I mean by that is as you're going into the feature, your lead shoulder is open 30 to 45 degrees because you want your perception to be normal. If I'm 45 degrees open with my lead shoulder, my lower body is gonna follow. So that means when I hit a jump, I may be landing at 45 degrees. I may be landing on my heel side at 90 degrees. And why that is not awesome is if you're trying to hit another feature, you're not gonna have any speed for that. Or you turn sideways, you put the e-brakes on as soon as you land, you're slipping out to your bum, you're not having a good time. So being able to take off in a stacked position, specifically for a straight air, meaning your shoulders, hips, and board, are all lined up in a stacked position, like in an athletic position, and everything's going in the same direction. Your upper body is not contradicting your lower body. So make sure everything is stacked and that you're able to go up and over nice and smooth, then land, absorb the impact, then slow it down if you need to. If you're going really fast, you're not comfortable hitting the next feature, slow it down, totally okay, but stay stacked. <laughs> When it comes to jumps, it can be very scary, especially as you go bigger and bigger and bigger. So the second point is being in a strong body position, specifically allowing your belly button to be in the center of your board. As you go into bigger jumps, you get more scared. You traditionally start to lean back. Now, if the jump is gonna push you back and you're already leaning back, everything is amplified, so you're going in the back seat. Right as you take off, your arms are swinging. If you're too far back, see, the arms are swinging, you can't recover. You're landing on your back. So you actually wanna make sure your belly button is center, that your weight is distributed evenly between both of your feet. That's a really big important part. Kind of a little added to that is you guys want to make sure you're popping off of two feet, not ollieing. I'm going to make a whole separate video, a versus series, ollie versus pop. That's going to be coming soon, so make sure you subscribe. But for now, make sure you're popping, meaning you have a two-footed extension off of the lip. And if your belly button is stacked between your knees and your weight's even, it's easier just to extend. If my weight's already back seat and I try to extend, it's gonna be more of a weird pop or more of a weird ollie or hybrid. So make sure you got your body positions dialed, especially when you start to get freaked out and you get scared, put yourself in a strong position. third part is making sure that we're keeping our eyes up and looking in the direction we're traveling. The most common thing is your eyes start to look down because you're trying to spot the landing underneath you. Well, you may be dropping your shoulders. You may be flexing at the waist. Your whole body leans in the air so you start to fall forward, fall forward. Before you even hit the ground, you're already falling. And then as soon as you touch the ground, you're in a position that makes it way harder to recover. So the easiest thing that you can do is look where you're going. I suggest looking to the next feature or you know, 15 feet out in front of you. And when you do that, it helps keep your eyes up, your chest up, your shoulder up, and then it allows you to absorb the train. I just wanted to add real quick, oh, I'm falling over, I'm dying. I just wanted to add really quick that if you are landing and then your hands are dragging on the ground, it's considered like not landing it, just so you guys know. And then if you land and you just keep skidding and sliding around, that also like doesn't count in like the kind of the cultural norm. So 
get things clean. I have a bunch of other how-to videos that's gonna help you guys clean that up. So check out the playlist. That's gonna be linked right there. But uh, yeah, let's keep it going. If you guys have been watching a while, you probably have picked up that I do this little X crossy thingy as I go off of a jump. And the biggest reason why is that it helps me stay in that aligned position that I was talking about earlier. It is really hard to cross your arms and do that little wind up thing if you're in an opened position and you naturally are gonna hit your leg or it just feels uncomfortable. So by doing the cross arm things, it actually makes you in a better alignment. Now, this is not for everyone. Try it, if you dig it, dig it. If you don't dig it, don't do it. You, may you might not like the style, you might like it, you might not. What up, dog? We're throwing you in there, what up, dog? If you might like it, may not like it, it's, it you gotta try it out, see if you dig it. So what you guys just witnessed there is probably something that you may have seen, you may have experienced. If you haven't experienced it, that's a good thing. So one of the biggest things when it comes to jumps is dialing in your speed. You gotta make sure you go the right amount. Yes, you could go way too fast, overshoot it, not have a good day. You can come up short, not have a good day. The idea is to land on the sweet spot. So we're talking roughly about a board length past the knuckle. Obviously that's gonna vary based on the jump that you're actually hitting, but that is the goal, it's to land in the sweet spot. And why that's important is as your energy is coming down and all those forces are directed down the hill instead of just into your body. So dial in your speed. One key, key thing that you can do is find somebody that's within your the same ability as you as well as the same body type and watch that person. How many turns are they taking? Are they taking only carves? Are they going perfectly straight? Are they doing a huge setup turn? What are they doing? And then you just try to replicate that. You can also follow a friend in that's a B at snowboarding, follow them, trust their speed. I'll do a whole nother video on that when it comes to hitting big, 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 big jumps. But that's another thing is dial in your speed. With that said, wax is a heck of a big deal. If your board is performing fast, it's easier to slow it down versus the opposite. So if you guys are interested in any wax, definitely check out uh, Pearl Wax. They got some awesome biodegradable, amazing stuff. Link in the description below. You guys get 20% off. We're gonna keep it going. At some point you may be asking, how do I deal with the fear of hitting jumps? How do I go to bigger and bigger jumps? Well, just so you guys know, I'm gonna make a video on those two separate topics here in a little bit. So make sure you subscribe, put the post notifications on so you don't miss that video. But I'm gonna go through my experience of hitting big jumps. I personally hate big jumps and I wanna overcome that fear and I want you guys to come along for the ride. So that's gonna be one video as well as a advanced or intermediate to advanced jumping video. So make sure you guys check that out too. So we started small, now we're gonna make our way up to the bigger jumps, go hit those, as well as we're gonna do some spinning. Now I'm gonna cover a couple of the common spinning mistakes. No, I'm not gonna break down the mechanics of spinning, but I wanna tell you a couple of the most common mistakes. So if you guys agree or disagree, definitely, if you agree, disagree, let me know in the comments below. I might have thrown Sean for a loop on that one, but the first thing I wanna talk about is when you guys are spinning is understanding your C-turn and timing it so that your trajectory is allowing you to go up and over the jump and you're minimizing your drift. If you drift left to right a couple feet, two feet, it's no big deal. But if you're drifting significantly like I did, I'm making the jump way bigger. So if my speed was perfect, it would get me over the jump. But because I'm drifting so far to the side, I'm killing a lot of speed, I'm killing a lot of momentum, but I'm actually making the jump way bigger. And then, because I'm so far to that side, it's way harder to come back into the line to set up another trick. So it's very important that you guys are minimizing your drift. <laughs> All right guys, this brings me to the, my next point. As you're going off the jump, ideally you're trying to minimize your skid. Now front side, yes, you're gonna have a little bit of skid, just a little bit of skid. But if you're taking off 90 degrees, 270, 270 degrees early on the jump, it definitely doesn't count. Plus you're slamming on the brakes, you're minimizing your momentum to actually clear the jump. And then lastly, if you're skidding the crap out of your takeoff, it's really hard to actually control your rotation. You kind of just go on a roller coaster ride and whatever happens, happens. If you can minimize that skid, you're gonna maximize your control and it's just gonna be way more awesome. So do your best to minimize that skid, both front side and back side. Front side, way easier to skid. Back side, way harder to skid. So 
I'm gonna contradict what I just said and I'm gonna show you an example. Rip! And on that note, guys, my knees are flipping sore. So we're gonna end that there. If you guys agree, disagree, or feel like I missed anything, let me know in the comments below because I love making content that's gonna make you guys more awesome. That is the whole point of this channel, is to do just that. So I appreciate you guys' support. If you guys are looking for any stickers, any merch, it's gonna be down below. All of that stuff does support the channel. I do love all of you guys, so nothing but love. We out.